So let's begin and understand about Docker. Docker is called as a containerization tool which brought a great revolution in the way we deploy and develop the application. The process of development deployment has got changed. Okay, that, that, that brought a lot of change and I can say uh, that helped the DevOps implementation a lot. Okay, see we have got till now what we did. Okay, let us analyze. See, understand the flow first of all. Till now what we did, we have uh, compiled the code, means developers have given the code, we have compiled. Developers have given the test cases, we have executed them. Okay, and then uh, compile, then to execute the test cases. And then we have also created a package. Now we have to do deployment. Okay, this deployment, you may be having a question. Without Docker also we have deployed. Yes, you could deploy on some physical servers or else you may deploy on some EC2 instances, means some instances on any cloud, right? Or else you may deploy on some virtual machines. There are all multiple options. Right, you may do the deployment in multiple ways, but when you go to deployment process, okay, uh, when you deploy to containers, it brought a lot of change in the way or in the process of ha what happening now in DevOps methodology. Till now, whatever tools we have learned, like Gate, the Jenkins, or some shell scripting, the Jenkins file using Groovy script, whatever these tools we have used till now, may be used in any methodology, not only in DevOps. Some testers will be using it, developers will be using it. Of course, I'm talking out of DevOps methodology, not only in DevOps methodology, in different methodologies also, these tools were used from so long, okay? Uh, but yeah, we are using them in uh, DevOps also. But from here on, the way we use containers, the way we develop, the way we deploy using containers, that's where the uh, big change, uh, that, that's where the change happens with. Right, the DevOps methodology or the way we are deploying the applications, the way we were maintaining the applications, that was all possible through Docker. Okay, this is the tool which brings a lot of change and which adds color to our DevOps methodology, right? But how is it possible? How much change it has brought? Like uh, what the, what this Docker is doing, let us see, let us understand. Okay, like I said already, Jenkins, yeah, you, you are not in DevOps methodology, but still you might have used uh, Jenkins for running your test cases. You might have used Jenkins to uh, run your compile job and so on. But the complete flow with the Docker brings a lot of change. Okay, so let's see what it does. And to understand this, let's take a very simple example. Um, let's suppose you, you have uh, an application. Uh, let's say, okay, there's a company A. It has developed an application, a gaming application. Okay, and this application has got some prerequisites. Means... This application will work only on Ubuntu systems. Let's say that to version 16, Ubuntu 16. <clears throat> it works on Ubuntu 16 and it works with, uh, let's say, Java 8 and Tomcat 9. Okay, these are the prerequisites for this application. It works only on this environment. Okay, fine. There were so many clients who are interested to buy this application. Let's say we have multiple clients who are interested to buy and to use this app. Okay, there were so many clients. Let's take a talk about three clients who are interested to buy this app. Client one, if you take, okay, he is interested to use this app. But this client has got uh, some other Linux distribution, let's say CentOS. He don't have Java, he don't have Tomcat as well. Let's talk about client two. He is having a Windows machine, uh, but with Java 8 and Tomcat 9. Okay, there is also uh, like client three who has got all the prerequisites. Like, yes, he has got Ubuntu 16, Java 8, Tomcat 9. Yes, he has got all the prerequisites. Now, I need to provide the application for all these clients. So how can we provide the application to this client one and client two? Can we provide them with our application? See, it's very easy to provide the application for the client three, isn't it? It's very easy. Yes, because he has got all the prerequisites, just give the application and run it, it works well. But what about client one and client two? Do we lose them because they don't have the 
रिक्वायर्ड एनवायरमेंट इफ दैट इज द केस बिजनेस डजेंट वर्क isn't it because everyone doesn't have the system requirements as per your app but how to provide them with the application how to uh, provide them with the application without losing them how to retain the clients what to do what are the solutions for this problem statement actually there are multiple solutions you could come out of uh, the ways or different inputs you have what are the solutions any solutions how to handle client one and client two without losing them how to provide them with app that's the main thing any inputs share your inputs make the sessions interactive so that i know uh, like your understanding um uh, feel free to share your inputs maybe cloud environment says vinayak give them a cloud environment how cloud environment exactly means what what are you trying to share with them are you trying to share your aws account are you trying to share your gcp account share the cloud means share the cloud environment means what exactly you are trying to share to them see my questions help you think in a proper way that's what that's the reason i'm questioning you to get a proper answer from you you think in a right way okay install java tomcat on their cloud cloud means what exactly vinay cloud means on their account you install uh, java and tomcat the terminology makes a lot of difference so try to learn and use the right words there that's my intention of questioning you install java tomcat on their cloud do you install java tomcat on their cloud means what exactly it is okay let me cut down uh, to uh, some other simple format see take our example okay we are here to learn devops but for devops we need linux environment we don't have devops uh, sorry we don't have linux environment mine is windows 10 yours is mac system so how are we handling it what are we doing in the operating system session introduction to operating system we have discussed that ec2 instance or install java tomcat on an ec2 instance on the cloud machines correct pinay that that is the right answer right yeah so see it means uh, in the operating system introduction class i have explained you about something called virtual machines first comes virtual machine into picture create a virtual machine of ubuntu 16 put java 8 tomcat 9 put your gaming app also then share this vm to different clients right that's one way but if you do you vm your own data center it should be your own data center you should maintain the data center we have discussed that so Uh, rather than uh, using our own data center, we'll use some instances on a cloud. Instances means virtual machines on cloud. Maybe AWS or GCP or Azure or DigitalOcean or Linode, whatever it is, right? So you create a virtual machine. That's the first thing. Virtual machine or physical servers also. You can give the connectivity to them or whatever. So share the virtual machines uh, or else share create a instances on cloud and share them with the virtual machines or ec2 instances okay that's how you can that's a primary or the basic solution but when you give virtual machines what happens uh okay the differences we'll talk later so let's talk about the solutions to this problem so the first solution is provide them with a virtual machine this virtual machine could be on your own data centers means on prem server oh, sorry on on the on your own data center right or else there is also another solution for this problem statement which is through containers you may provide them with a virtual machine that virtual machine could be on your own data center or on cloud or else containers also does the same or oh, is it if containers also does the same what is the difference we'll talk about the differences step by step slowly first understand yes both provide the same solution okay you create a virtual machine you put ubuntu you put tomcat you uh, put java and share it same is the case with containers means both virtual machines 
and containers uses the same concept. The concept is called virtualization. Both uses the same concept. Then it, there is no difference at all. Do you mean in, there is no difference? There is a lot of difference. We are going to cut down to the point. So yeah, both uses the concept of virtualization. Uh, but there is some difference. In VMs, virtualization is done to the hardware. But in containers, virtualization is done to the software. Means virtualization is done at the OS level. Again, what is meant by that? Don't worry. Okay, I'll justify the statement in some time. So just understand both uses the concept of virtualization. But in virtual machines, virtualization is done to the hardware. Whereas in containers, virtualization is done to the OS level. And virtualization done to the OS level is called containerization. Okay, so virtualization done to the OS level is called containerization. And, okay, fine, uh, containerization is a concept where you run your application with containers. But then what is Docker? Docker is a tool, okay, tool or a software or whatever you call it. It's a tool which helps you to create containerization platform. It creates this containerization platform. It creates this environment for you. Means, let me make it again simple. See, you want to run Java application. You want to have Java installed. Correct? Same is the case. If you want to create a container, if you want to run a container, if you want to work with containers, Docker should be installed and run. Docker is a tool or a software which creates a containerization environment, containerized environment, let's say. Am I making sense? Clear all of you? Understood? Right? So, yeah, both uses. And here you need to understand one more thing. Whenever we talk about containers, don't think that containers are replacing virtual machines. We don't need virtual machines now. Everything happens on container. No. Containerization is the next step to virtualization. That's all. It's not replacing it. This is just the next step to virtualization. The base is always virtualization. Above that, we are having containerization. Both are used in the projects. We need both of them. We cannot say virtual uh, containerization is replacing virtualization. No. Am I clear? Okay, so now uh, we need to talk about the differences. Like what is meant by virtualization happening to the hardware? What is meant by virtualization? Uh, happening to OS level, which is called containerization, how different they were, let us talk about. To understand this, you need to understand the architecture of containers thoroughly. 